Hey, what's up, Silas here? This is part of the Meme Whisperer series where I look at memes and I kind of just analyze them and talk about things that happen around them. This one I'm going to be talking about a play on that basic meme that you've seen the three people standing on a fence with different boxes comparing equality and equity. It's going to be up on the screen. I shall explain it to you for those of you who are just listening and then getting into that right now. Okay, so a quick description of the meme. I'm going to be actually talking to you about an interaction that happened after I posted it. This meme had people who reacted to it when I posted it on my social media, who from different aspects of life, from different sections and sectors, people I might disagree with on things like religion, some people I might have different discussions and certain things, but it's, it's a meme. It's interesting. I think it's a good play on this one. Okay, so it's the three people. It's like a, an, an adult. Something looks like a teen and um, a toddler or something, and they're all of different heights. They're almost like half the height of each person. And they're all standing on this box, and they're looking over into what looks like a baseball game, and this stands in the background. So the first one is equality. they all standing on the same box. And then the, the man, of course, now you can see the fence comes up to his waist. The, the boy or the teen is kind of holding the fence, but it's just right at his head. You can see over. Then they say equity. And now it's the next one. The man's hand is in the air. The teen is kind of looking at the at the toddler because now the toddler's got both hands in the air. The teen's on one box. The toddler is on two boxes. Now the toddler can see and like, yeah, so the kids, so equity is supposed to be like, yeah, that's what they mean. And I think this is something that people talk before. It was a time, a short time in my life when I was an egalitarian, an egalitarian. <laughs> <laughs> and with egalitarianism, that's when I was still trying to trying to make sense. You know, it was in apologetics. There was a time also when I was faithful towards, I was raised Christian. Then I was like, okay, I'm just non-denominational Christian. Then it got to a time when I was like, I'm just spiritual. I'm kind of uh, agnostic, spiritual kind of thing. I just have a problem with with organized religion, not religion in and of itself, and spiritual. And I think egalitarian is pretty much, it's, it's not even a centrist. It doesn't have those centrist memes. It's, it's, it's a different kind of thing. Egalitarian is, I think, the, the, <laughs> the equivalent of being spiritual, quote-unquote, or um, agnostic when it comes to the modern religion of statism, of progressivism, of saying, I need to have other people have their results actually done. So it's like, okay, it's not about equality of results, but it's about equity of access to certain things. So I think this was the original meme, just the, the meme, man. <laughs> the original meme was just those two, the equality and equity. Now in this one, they add an extra part of socialism and it, it's <laughs> the man has his legs chopped off and then the, cho the chopped off legs are just kind of tossed behind the kid, the, the toddler, and none of them can see over the fence now. And then the last one is the fence has been raised up and it says tickets on the fence and none of them can look over and that says justice. And I saw this and was like, yeah, that is that is actually a more accurate meme. It, it's, it's a meme. It's supposed to be for the laws and things like that. It's a gruesome this little puddle of blood below the, the man's legs and the socialism kind of situation. But it, that's it, and that's an, it's a good addition to this, and I think it's it's an excellent addition to the whole kind of idea. This might also go with the political compass a bit, where it's like equality, equity, socialism, justice. Okay, so I posted this. It was getting good uh, good interactions from people. I just put Keck. That was the only thing I mentioned there. And um, I had somebody, a, a relative of mine that's here in Kenya. The last time I was hanging out with him, we, we discussed certain things. He's He's a bit younger than I am. But we were talking about just the sociopolitical reaction to some of the things happening with the pandemic. And this is something that I've, I've mentioned before. One positive thing about this is it is something that anyone can talk about and use as a basis to discuss many other issues. It's not that I, I didn't have things to talk to him before about, but it, we were talking about that before. So I don't necessarily know where he stands on basic sociopolitical things. But this is what the person wrote. I think the idea on socialism is to hold up the two kids so that all are at the same level. Then dot, dot, dot. This was probably made by an American. I could be wrong, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. So, you can look at the meme again, and part, part of what I do this meme whisperer, part of why I post some of these things, it's interesting to see how people take different things. 
Problems occur not because of what X is, but because of how we define X. So right now, the person thought what I was actually mentioning here, and I'll just mention a, a separate a separate um, comment from somebody else. This is somebody I went to school with in, when I was in Italy, um, and she posted this, and she said in Italian, unfortunately my Italian is so gone, I had to respond to her in, in, by using Google Translate. She wrote, uh, Silas, secondo, secondo me l'ultima vignetta dovrebbe riportare uh, la scritta capitalismo. So essentially they were saying that, I can kind of understand when they write stuff, but the first thing was like, wait, well, is she also talking about this, this socialism thing? Or, you know, she's actually, I definitely did not talk to her about sociopolitics, but she was talking about l'ultimo, like the last one, the one that says justice should could have the word uh, capitalism written on it. And, you know, I can kind of see why, why she said this, because it was like equality, equity, socialism, capitalism, like maybe they're talking about the things working together. So this was my response to her. Forse, ma per una meme, la giustizia funziona. La parola capitalismo è stata cambiata da molti. Ma se stiamo discutendo di proprietà privata, questa è giustizia. And now in, I'll go back in my response. My response to her on this was like, yeah, so for, for a meme, ju- justice functions in this in this meme template. I think it works because the word capitalism, when I posted a video there where I was talking about the history of the world, capitalism, the interesting hit- history, when they talk about capitalism in general, it seems to be the most popular parlance is actually not necessarily free markets. Yet I think this actual image is more about some kind of free markets, and you'll see this in the analysis of the response to that original message. And so I was like, yeah, so this is justice. To me, it kind of fits. So with her, that was an interesting thing, just seeing from this, this relative who's here in Kenya, he saw this, and then he felt the need to comment that to in somewhat of a defense of his description of socialism. And then she, we got along well enough. <laughs> I thought we got along pretty well. And um, yeah, it was just interesting that she came on and she's like, okay, she can, she could see that that thing that, yes, this was for justice. So this is part of what I'm talking about. This is somebody I knew in Italy. This is somebody I know here in Kenya. This is something that I posted that, as the person said, is made by an American. And, and you'll see in my response, I do agree this was probably made by an American. But before I get into that, let me remind you again about what the person wrote. Then I'll just read what my response was and give you some comments. So I think the idea on socialism is to hold up the two kids so that they're all at the same level, not to cut off the legs, dot, dot, dot. This is probably made by an American. I could be wrong. Okay, here's my response. You are likely right on the providence of the meme, but seem confused on the practical nature of socialism. This meme is quite accurate, and both memeing and liberty are something that Americans seem to have a higher affinity for than other people. Now, no need for speaking of the idea of socialism. Just show me the practical examples where socialism lifts people up instead of reducing, dragging down, and limiting those who can achieve more. Socialism and communism are cancers to human flourishing. I am not owed any of what you gain, and you are not to be punished for anything that I lose. The floor is the floor. We all start at the floor. Life includes competition and a variety of desires and capabilities. Imagine, for example, global socialism. How would your idea of socialism make everyone in Kenya have the same quality of life as the average person in Manhattan? And with Manhattan, I mean uh, the main island when people think of New York City, Times Square, uh, Central Park, and things like that. That's Manhattan Island. That's part of New York City. Okay, back to my response. How would it level out our disparate levels, assuming you don't think that we are equal on all things, but think we should be? Then whose level is considered the same one we should all be on? And the dot, dot, dot. Would it be able to make it so that we can all own our Amazon company and an ability to fund a newspaper like the Washington Post? Here I'm talking about Jeff uh, Bezos. Will we all be like Elon Musk with our own reusable rockets? And here I'm talking about SpaceX. I've heard several videos on SpaceX, and this stuff's amazing. Stuff like the rockets go up and they land. I still, still to this day, I'll watch the live streams or re-watch things where they have the cameras with the actual rockets landing and just be like, wow. And something like that is uniquely American. And to see this African-American man, 
Elon Musk, who was born in South Africa and things like that, and then immigrated to um, to the United States of America and has been able to do this through some private-public partnership. I know there's some questions that go into that. And you want to get into his personal life, but just that whole rocket thing is just so amazing to me. It's well, it's 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 amazing. But anyway, are we going to have those kind of companies? Back to my response. No, it's about taking what others have earned nationalizing and making things public, then redistributing the resources to people who in many cases can't use them as the original person could, just like in this fantastic meme. And here I'm just I'm just getting s- some more specifics here. Why I'm thinking this whole thing with the legs being cut off and just thrown there, you know, if his legs were just cut off and or, or he was just made to kneel, that's something else. That, that one to me would be like, okay, but the fact that this person cut the legs off put the blood there, and literally just put those legs behind the toddler and didn't like strap them on to the toddler's legs or the infant's legs or the midget. And that's that's something I'll get into later here. Just that adds an extra part to it because socialism is about redistribution. And sometimes you will give somebody a resource that you think we all need this resource. This person has too much. That person has too much leg. So we'll put these legs on this other person's place, even if this person can't use that leg. Oh, you have too much wealth. You have too much money. So we're going to give this money. You have too much land. You have too much X, Y, Z. And I'll come back to that later. But I thought that was an extra part. That that showed the redistribution where you're putting it there. And it's not like that kid can just strap those legs on and then that kid will be able to stand on them. It, it's, you can't use some of these things that you're given. You just give them the thing. If I was just given Amazon right now, the company would, be, would disappear probably. I wouldn't be able to just take over Amazon. You couldn't just give me a SpaceX. I wouldn't be able to run it. Elon Musk has put in the time and effort and has the mind and situation to be able to do what Elon Musk does. And you can't just swap people around. You can't just divide this to everyone to have a say in what's supposed to be done there. Okay, back to my response. Interesting take that you got from this. Seems to take no notice that the kids could technically grow into a height to look over eventually. I engage in piracy over creative content, but in part, I also try to create some free content to return into the system. But you seem to take no account of the folk who are playing and or paying to watch the game. And even for me, this is this is something that once I saw it in this meme form with the tickets and this is part of why it got to me like the justice was like, wait, yeah. Actually, why was I even okay with this? This is the meme whisperer. We're diving deep into this meme, breaking it down and things like that. And yeah, like this is a game. There stands there. Those other people likely paid to watch this game. Or these people could just go in and walk and see. It's just interesting that they that some people see this and see it in that way. Okay, so continue on the response. I'd even see more of an even take being that. Socialism is about having everyone's ticket have a percent taken out to give some free tickets to the people. And that's more, I think, of what the United States and Westernized systems are, where there the is high levels of relatively high levels of taxation, or it's like 25 percent on average. 25, some places are higher to 35. But most Western countries, I think, are between when it comes out to it to 25 to 35 percent, you have the higher earners, of course, paying a lot more. There's a lot of people, there's a lot, I think it's like what the top 10 percent pays something like 50 percent of the actual things like income taxes and things like that. And then the bottom 50% doesn't really, is not really a net taxpayer. So there's actual different things you can talk about in there. But I think in general, the Americanized system is you tax some from the people that earn, and then you're able to provide actual goods and resources and services for the people who don't have access to actually pay to actually be in that place. So for example, these people have earned and the ability to pay to come in there. And let's say the game they're watching is the equivalent of getting to schools and things like that. But then you take, some money out of all the tickets that they pay to actually come into the school. And then with that, you give these people the access by putting the boxes or something into the place. And and that's the thing. Like, So why didn't he just suggest that socialism should be put up there with equity and things like that? And I, I do get that's what some people say. That's what I used to say with the whole legalitarian thing. But anyway, just back to finishing up my response. 
So saying, the more accurate would be that socialism is about not allowing them to have a fence because it's defined by capital goods being earned and controlled publicly with no recognition of private ownership. Then I ask them, how do you define socialism? And that's what I'm asking you out there as well. And I have separate videos. And I also linked to them a short video that I made, and I shall link that up here if you're watching on YouTube. It should be up in the corner. You can click on it called um, Universal Basic Intercourse which I think is it's a good video that kind of just encompasses the basics of what socialism and co the communism that it leads to is about. And I've talked about this before. I had a conversation with somebody who was a scientific socialist trying to understand how he defines anarcho-capitalism. I just recently did a video where I read something from um, Murray Rothbard where he was talking about the definitions of socialism, progressivism, conservatism, liberals, when it comes to uh, libertarians and people who are more about liberty and things like that, and how those things have been skewed, and how the old order have come in and tried to take on kind of wolf in sheep's clothing and control this new um, epoch that we're turning towards. So some of these terms, and just like I was talking before with my friend from Italy who commented, from, listen, from actually listening to that video about capitalism, the word, the history of it, I have also decided to stop using that word capitalism. It has been mutated and perverted to a level that I think for the time being, since there is something I can just talk about free markets, or if I use capitalism, I can specifically say free market capitalism. If I'm talking about that, if I'm talking about private property, private ownership of goods, I can just say that instead of using capitalism, which is a word that has been bastardized, it is loaded with so many other things. People have used it for different things. And that's a similar thing with socialism. People will say it means other things. And it's that whole thing like, I, this is the thing that I added in that Princess Bride thing. You keep using, they keep using that word. But I don't think they think what I think they think they mean. Because they have something in mind. Their definition of X is their definition of X. But my problem is I often get to a point where I am projecting my definition of X onto them and saying, before I see X, I would not call it this. Yet we are both looking at this thing, and it's clearly not that. But that thing we're both looking at, to them, they think that thing is X. So they are being 100% on point honest in most cases. There are some people who are disingenuous. There are some people who are confused. But in general, most people truly believe from how they define, from if they've attempted to actually define it. And that's why I'm encouraging people. Have these conversations. Ask people. Even, even, even if you, there's, there's ways to disagree with somebody without getting combative, without stating your own position. Somebody brings up something like socialism, just ask them a simple question. How do you define socialism? Somebody says, oh, God has done this. I just ask them. You don't have to say, oh, I don't believe or that's made up. How do you define God? How did he do that? What kind of thing that, that happened right there made you think this was by some supernatural being? Oh, socialism is the thing that's going to make people have the same level? How do you define the same level? Same level of what? Have you actually had any examples to show why everybody would even want to be at that level? Is equality even something that is possible or even desirable? Now, when it comes to equity, access to things, is that possible? Like I mentioned right here, these people are going to get older. Like, instead of putting those benches there, maybe that kid doesn't want to watch. What makes you think the infant wants to watch? Make, what makes you think it's an infant? It might be a dwarf. <laughs> it might be a little person. Maybe the old man has, has rickety legs. Maybe it's a really old man. Maybe he should be given some, some, some benches to sit on. Maybe his kid is in the game watching or something. Or like, uh, he divorced, his wife divorced him and took the kid away. And through the family courts, he would deny to actually see them. And, and now he has to pay all the child support. And that's why he can't actually afford to actually get the ticket. And now he's, he's, he's here. And then he decides to actually go there. And then, and then these kids were there like, oh, yeah, we want to watch. And then it was the two kids in the equity situation. And they had those three boxes. And they were like, yeah, we kind of just were walking by and we had these three boxes. We heard there was a game. I was kind of just like, right, do you want I don't really care about baseball, but I'm here and I'm just kind of seeing that thing. So I was like, okay, whatever. And then the, 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 the man walks by and he's, he's, he can't stand up anymore because his legs are rickety. He's like, my, my son's watching and my son's playing his game. I haven't seen him. And then the two kids are like, oh, wow. Like you actually have more interest in actually watching this game. So here, take all three boxes and sit on them so you're not on your legs and you can watch your son play. 
that could be something where it's like they the three people are involved there and then the the, the, the the guy can be like oh thanks for doing this and then maybe the son sees him there and then everything then after the game the, the kids get access to the there's other things so why do people go there because whenever you get to the point when you start analyzing memes and be like to me it's interesting why are you analyzing on that sense why did he not even refer to why the justice isn't justice like that last one do you think that last one is justice to actually have tickets. That's something I'm asking you all out there. Like, should we have freedom of access to things? Because as I mentioned with this one, there are people, there are costs to actually run a stadium, to have all these things. Some of these people might be, those players might be there getting paid from the concessions, getting paid from the people watching. And that's the kind of thing I wonder. If somebody pays me to make some art, to do like some animation and something, They've already paid me the animation. I'm not being paid any more for it. Like the contract's already gone. Let's say it's $500 for, let's say like a 10 second spot and things like that. Whatever, they pay me. And then they say it's for a private use and then they take it and then they show it to other people. Even if they make more money off of it, where it's like, let's say it's an advert and then their company starts earning more money. Do I have a right to demand more from that initial contract that we had? I don't think so, because I entered that contract with that person. That person didn't force me to enter that contract. Now, what if they're like, yeah, I'm going to use it for two years, and then eventually they end up using it for 10 years? If it's not like directly stipulated in the contract, I still don't have any say off of this. So this one you're kind of wondering, like, would they be taking anything away by watching something without paying, even though the people who have paid for it, are watching it, does that reduce the value of what those people have paid? Is that taking it away? And to tie this up, they, I, had, I had a thought. We were just talking about how the amounts of money that certain athletes were being paid. Like in, uh, in This was some time back when I started noticing this. It was absurd amounts. Like Cristiano Ronaldo was a, a football player in um, in from... What, what team does he play for now? He's not in PSG. He's, like, he's back in Manchester. At this time, he was for Real Madrid, and he had, I think there was a time when Gareth Bale had just signed with them, and he was paid like $90 million for a few years. There's some absurd amount of money. I was just thinking, what is the cap for this? Because these teams, very few of these teams actually run profits, don't they? Like, what, what, what is the actual margin for this? A lot of these teams, is just people coming through and getting to those top teams. Then the top teams in the league seem to actually make the money. And recently, Patrick Mahomes, who is a quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, in the American Football League, he got paid something like $480 million for a 10-year contract, and it's like most of it is guaranteed. And I think that that is definitely the most amount of money guaranteed, maybe for all American athletes, but definitely for football players. And having this kind of guarantee thing, that money's paid already. So Patrick Mahomes, as long as Patrick Mahomes himself hits the agreed things in his contract. He might have things, stipulations in the contract. It's 16 games a season for now. They might change it to 18 and things like that. But anyway, they have a certain stipulations where like, there might be things where it's like, as long as you play for our team and maybe you win eight games a season or something, like at least 50% of the games, or you average 300 uh, yards a game, or you average 25, or you score 25 touchdowns in a year, whatever. There's certain stipulations that say, no matter what, there's guaranteed money where this money is coming to you for signing this contract. So even if nobody ever goes to another Kansas City Chiefs game, if everybody decides, all the fans decide, we're, not, we're going to stop playing this, and for half the stadium, there's a low fence, or there's low fence and boxes and things like that, where people can just go and stand and jack those boxes up and look over the fence and watch the game for free, and Kansas City Chiefs makes no more money from actual stands and people watching, they would still have to pay him that money. So the athletes themselves, in that case, maybe they're not hurt. But the people who actually decided to organize the sports league and get the actual people there are the ones who are taking some kind of negative when you go and you take these things. So these three people are kind of sort of taking something away from those people. And by more people coming into the stands, there's less... There's an increase of demand, the, the cost goes down, where you can sh spread that cost down for the people who actually want to actually watch this thing, get those ticket prices lower. And part of this is thinking, if Patrick Mahomes is so good and he brings so many people in, then the demand is so high, then you can charge a certain amount of money. Then you can make a certain amount of profit. You can attract better athletes who want to win, like Patrick Mahomes is an amazing quarterback, so I might take a reduction in salary to come here. 
or with that excess money that you're making from Patrick Mahomes being such a sellable character, being a sellable person from selling merchandise and all these other things from the exterior of just being known as this team that's winning and people want to be around winning in the United States of America and the rest of the world in general, they have that thing about them. They'll get to that point where now they can build maybe a bigger stadium and have more tickets places and things like that and invest in more actual uh, facilities, better facilities for the people who actually decide to come and pay and you get a better product and they hire more people than some of these people right there. They might get hired. Maybe these kids who grow up and they're not there to actually watch, they eventually grow up and because this team has been there, they've invested that money in Patrick Mahomes, they've invested the money in building a bigger stadium, this, these people now end up being hired or end up actually playing for that team or end up getting into a sport. So there's many other considerations to take in and there's many other ways to read this meme and I'm <laughs> winding this down this meme is where I appreciate you taking your time to come listen to this. But let me know. Let me know what you think about this meme. When you first saw it, what was your idea of what it was? What do you think about my analysis of breaking this down? Do you think justice is is an appropriate thing or do you think capitalism would have fit before? How do you define socialism, which is a key thing? For me, I use the basic description that you can find, I think, in Mises.org. You can check it out for, for more clarity. But it's essentially just a social system where private property and the redistribution or distribution of income is subject to social control, hence socialism. Whereas communism goes further to the point where there is no such thing as private property. It replaces private property and a profit-based economy with public ownership. So it's just communal control for pretty much all the means of production. That's, that's simply it. Now, everything else, you talk about it. That's why now people go into like democratic socialism that's controlling that. And that's what I was mentioning before. Capitalism is simply just the ownership of goods and the means of control in private hands. That's pretty much it. And based on profits and things like that. Now, when you go free market capitalism, there's something else. Now, the system that's right now, there are aspects of capitalism. There's different levels where it starts going towards fascism. There's things that are more socialistic because you're going more public control. Like there are aspects of capitalism still alive and well in many countries in the world. Like the Chinese Communist Party and People's Republic of China adopted some capitalist principles and that lifted a lot of people out of poverty. It's helped places in Africa lift out of poverty. But then you look at certain places where the corruption is just completely rife, where if you have to do something that is government regulated, if you have to do something that has free that has fiat currency involved in it, that is not an aspect of capitalism because fiat currency itself, which pretty much everyone has to use in the world right now, that is something that is publicly generated, that is publicly controlled. So that is more towards something that is socialist, more towards something that is capitalist. Places that have universal health care or whatnot, things like that, that is not a capitalist principle. That is not something, just like I was talking before with Elon Musk, there are aspects of SpaceX that are rather closely related with the public sector, where he has to have government approval and regulations on certain things, and there's the partnerships and getting tax breaks and incentives for different kind of things. That, that to me, it's like, yeah, but that's, that's unfortunately at the current time what you have to do to deal with certain things. I, I this, this is something I might talk about um, in, a, in a separate video. Just had a, an interaction with trying to, trying to set up some kind of private enterprise here in Kenya and just the low-level, blatant sort of bribery and <laughs> payments you, you, they, that you're incentivized to go through that you really just can't actually get the thing done without it. it. It disgusts me to a certain level. I'm just like, I understand with some people, they they, they mean strong, they, they care strongly enough about something where there's certain things I care strongly about right now that I'm looking into setting up ways to communicate some of these things better, to reach out to people better that are going to require me to actually enter relations and deal with these public sector things that tend to disgust me. That. I either have to hire people or once I know I have this goal and I say, okay, yes, I'm going to just bite my lip and take this right now for now because I know it's going to help me get this better thing in the future, even though for now I do really don't have any other options rather than to deal with these people and deal with the realities of what I have to do right now. And uh, it's it's tough. So anyway, that's it for the Meme Whisperer. Thank you very much for taking your time to come listen to this. Let me know what you thought about the meme. Like, share, subscribe. There should be links below to our merchandise store where you can buy different things and put it on the screen. I don't know what speed drawing I would be having going on during this. I'm trying to think if I would have thought of something now. I, I, I might I might look at this thing where I kind of find a way to do like the covers of the certain videos because my process of doing this is I normally record the thing and then I actually publish the video. And then, no, sorry, yeah, I actually take the video and the whole publishing thing, put it up with the visuals. And once it's published, then later on I'll come by and do the cover. 
So it's the covers are normally the last thing that I actually do. So it's now kind of tough for me to like, do the covers and then have that speed drawing or video capture of the covers and things. But that's just a little behind the scenes peek into the, how the how the sausage is made. Okay, till next time. Goodbye. <laughs>